In this video, we're going to look at a number of the input files associated with executing a MATSIM, or multi-agent transport simulation run, as well as the output files that are generated. A couple of videos I would strongly recommend that you have a look at and work through before proceeding. There is a set of introduction videos, a three-part series on our modeling philosophy, why we chose MATSIM, and then most importantly, what is this MATSIM? What are the components? The mobility simulation, the replanning, the scoring will be covered in that particular video. Also, as a starting point for this video, we already executed the MATSIM model for the small equal example using the graphical user interface. So it would be good if you have a look at that video and make sure that we start from the same point. After execution of the equal example, there was an output folder created in the same folder where the config file was selected. Before we look at the output files, let's just have a look at the actual config that we chose in the previous video. This is best opened up with a text editor. On Mac, I would recommend BB Edit or Text Wrangler. On Windows, it would probably be a good idea to use something like Notepad++. The config file is an extensible markup language, or XML, and the config is made up out of a variety of different modules. This particular example that ships with the Matsum release and you will see these modules have an opening tag module and the end of the tag with a forward slash module, which is normal in XML files. This is not a complete config file. It is kind of what we call a minimal config in that only parameters that we are setting for the specific example need to be covered and everything else, um, the model will use the default values. So the global module is where you can set the random seed. Every time you change the random seed, you should generate different results. The coordinate system of your particular run, Atlantis is just for dummy examples like this equal example. We can specify the network file in the network module, the facilities, the travel demand in the plans module. And all of these files are relative to the location of the config file that we've chosen. The controller module is where we set where the output should be written to. The first iteration, the last iteration, the mobility simulation that we're actually choosing, plan calc score indicates how plans should be scored. And I would highly recommend that you read a paper by David Currypar and Kai Nagel on the usefulness of these default scoring values. Finally, there is a strategy module where you can set how many plans should every agent keep, as well as different replanning strategies. In this particular example, because the values adds up to one, we can interpret them directly as probabilities. So there is a 90% chance that every agent will simply pick the best scoring plan from the previous iterations, which is kind of kept in memory. Then there is a 10% chance that an agent will take a plan, reroute it, and use that rerouted plan in the next iteration. So these are the things that we actually set inside the config module. The network is actually a description of the nodes and the links. And the best way to actually visualize the network is probably using Sumunto's VIA. If you navigate to, to sumunto.com, you will see that there is a link to VIA. And you can download a version for your specific operating system. When you download it, there is a user guide that you can have a look at. I will just touch on it very briefly.
At the top left, there are data sources where you will list all of your different data files. You can set the layers. You can work with specific agent groups, or there is some overlays like this north arrow, the clock at the top right, and the logos at the bottom right. What we can do is simply go to the network and drag it over to VIA and it will actually include it in the data sources. If we now want to add and visualize this network, we can go to layers, say file, add layer, or simply use the shortcut, which will open up a window and we can select network. The required data is a network XML file. It automatically picks up that the file is available and we can just call the network layer network. And when we add it, you will see that this is a well-known equal example that is often used in Matsum test cases and examples. You can select whether the nodes should be shown, change the sides of the nodes, change whether the offset should be to the left if you're left hand driving country like South Africa or to the right hand side and you can specify the width of these links as well. If you want to know specific elements you can just hover and click the query tool and when you hover over each one of the nodes or each one of the links it will actually tell you what the different link or node numbers are. If you click on it you will see more details on the right hand side. So this is the equal network that will actually be used. In its XML format this is what it looks like specifying the nodes, the X and Y locations which is in the projected coordinate system and then for every link we indicate its length, the capacity, the free speed and the number of lanes. If we look at the plans file, in the config it was specified that it uses 100 agents. Plans can either be kind of quick looked in Mac or let's open it up in our text editor again. It starts with the XML header and then every person with a specific ID has got a list of plans. In this case there's only one plan for each person. Person 1 starts at home which is at a sp specific XY coordinate, specific link number and the time that the home activity ends. It then travels by car along a specific uh, sequence of links and then it has a duration of 10 minutes of work at a specific XY location associated with a link and then it travels by car again back home. And similarly we have the plans for all 100 agents in this XML file. Right, that's what we need as a bare minimum for the equal example to actually run. So what happens during the course of a simulation run? We've just visualized the events during the start of or the zeroth iteration. By default events are only written out every 10 iterations, so we, if we look at the other iteration folders you will see that there is no uh, events file but in the 10th iteration we see that there's an events file again. To visualize what happens in the 10th iteration we can just drag the events file over to VIA. It is located there but just note that before we can add another visualization of vehicles we have to remove the previous one because you can only visualize one set of vehicles uh, at a time. So I'm going to remove that events layer so that I can add a new layer vehicles from events 
and I now want to use the 10th iterations events file and I'm going to call this vehicles 10. I can add it and load the data. If I just take my timer back to zero and I start running the simulation, I will actually see that there are a variety of agents that have now rerouted and randomly picked different routes. Their timing has not changed, so everybody still travels at exactly the same time. The events file of the 10th iteration is also the events file of the output folder itself. And we can actually see the score stats in text format. So we can see what the scores were for during every iteration, what was the average of everybody's executed plan, what was the average score of everybody's worst plan, everybody's average plan and the average of everybody's best plan. And we can compare different scenarios with one another by looking at these particular values. Although a very simple example, the equal simulation can be used very effectively to learn and play around with Matsum. If we go back one last time to our config file in this video, and we look at the strategy module, there are a variety of different replanning strategies that have already been implemented in Matsum. Some allows agents to change the timing of activities, others perform mode choice, others allow agents to select plans based on the score. So the higher the score, the higher likelihood of being chosen during the next iteration. And you can find a lot more information about different building blocks and strategies inside the Matsum book. The best way to navigate to the book is if you go to Matsum's website, you navigate to documentation, and you will see for users there is a link to the Matsum book where you can download a free copy of, at this point, the 2016 edition. Um, and it is available in a PDF ebook. It will give you a good background of Matsum itself as well as get you up and running in a lot more detail. Enjoy the journey!